senior pastor of God's Harbor for All Souls, and it brings me great pleasure to come to you on another Sunday where the word of the Lord will be given to you, and I truly pray that there is something that is said that will reach your spirit, touch your soul, and renew your mind. Amen. We're so excited to be able to share a word with you, but before we do, a couple of quick announcements as we learned on last week, amen, we are headed back into our building, amen, the first Sunday in April. We're so excited, amen, and I'm challenging all of you, amen, if you have not done so, please go visit your doctor, talk to your physician, see if it's okay for you to get vaccinated, to get boosted, amen, so that you can protect yourself, amen, and so that, amen, as we come together, amen, there will be no concerns, and so I'm asking you to do so, but we're so excited, 
Hey man, it's your choice. You don't have to. It's recommended. I have done it. My family has done it. And so I'm encouraging you, amen, to seek the face of God, use wisdom, talk to your doctors. But if you are planning to come back to church, amen, which I hope many of you will be, amen, we are going to unleash the fervor of praise and worship, love and God's grace like we've never seen before. Amen. We have been away for so long. Amen. But as we prepare uh, to come back to worship the Lord, I'm so excited to see so many of your faces that we haven't seen in such a long time. So excited to be able to engage. Amen. In communion, and we're planning, amen, that first week, amen, to do communion safely and securely, amen, in our sanctuary. Amen. And we are going to have an amazing time safely as we come back together and celebrating the love of God and what he has done. Amen. So many of us have so many testimonies in terms of how God has kept us through Omicron, through, amen, COVID-19. Amen. God has been faithful through the pandemic. Financially, he has blessed so many of you, your businesses, on your jobs, Amen. And so this is our way just to give thanks back to God for all that he has done, for all that he has kept us through. Amen. We're going to celebrate on April 3rd. Amen. We will only have, amen, services initially, first Sunday, third Sunday, amen, until we gain a rhythm. And then, amen, we will, amen, let you know when we'll be back every Sunday. Is that all right? Amen. So we're gradually getting back into the mix of things, gradually coming back. Amen. And for those who feel comfortable, amen, please feel free to join us on that day. Well, listen, we've got a mighty word to share with you. We're so excited to get into God's word as I truly believe that God has given us a pattern of messages to give to you, to strengthen your faith, to build you up, to be able amen, to operate in a higher level in God's grace than you have ever been able to, amen, in your lifetime. And I truly believe that God has called me, amen, in these last and evil days to be a voice of God's grace, of his kindness, amen, and of his love, amen, in these last and evil days to his people. And I truly believe that God has a word for us today to be able to demonstrate Amen. That there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do on our own to reach the level of success that God has for us. And now let me tell you, people of God, I'm looking at you. God has an amazing amount of success because of his grace and his favor. Listen, you don't realize truly unless God just reveals it to you what God has given in terms of his son's crucifixion. The finished work of Jesus has changed my life forever. It has changed the revelation of God's grace. Amen. And I pray, amen, that you are in the same vein of revelation that I have been in and have been experiencing God's love in an amazing way. Amen. For so many of us, amen, God's love is the crux. Amen. It's what I was raised on. Many of you may know Pastor Magnolia, Bebe, however you have called her affectionately, amen, Mama Mag, amen, she preached and she taught love. And so we continue in that vein. We continue, amen, to minister God's love and his grace. As I know, it has changed so many lives, amen, that I have encountered. Even in my life, God's love has been dominant. So turn with me as we get into scripture and as I begin to reveal to you, amen, what God has shared with me in his word. Turn with me to Luke, the fifth chapter, starting at the eighth verse. As we begin to demonstrate to you, amen, how Jesus began to step on the scene. And you will begin to understand through the background scriptures that Jesus, amen, was a rock star. He was a superstar, amen, as it related to the multitudes who followed him. He was someone that had drawn the attention of thousands, the Bible says. Amen. He fed thousands. People followed him by the thousands. Amen. And so when Jesus asked you to do something, his presence was so dynamic that we will begin to see in his word how just his presence, amen, and his words changed the lives of men, 12 men, 
that changed the world and revolutionized Christianity as we know it, amen, just because of his presence, amen. And as we see here, as we lay out the background scripture, Peter, amen, has his own business, amen. He's a Marine, amen. He is someone that, amen, has control of his own fishing company, amen. He, amen, leads the charge, finds fish so that he can feed his family. That's his occupation, and we learn in Luke, the fifth chapter, amen, that after Peter had toiled all day long, went to all of the hot spots, amen, and he didn't find any fish. He toiled all night. He was frustrated. And so Jesus stepped on the scene, gave him some instruction, and we will pick up Luke 5, 8 from there. And it says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So today I want to talk about what was this event that transpired that made Peter first recognize his sins. You see, people of God, the body of Christ, we have been so enamored with the power of sin. The power of sin has, amen, produced so many messages. We have condemned so many because of their sin. But I'm here today to share with you this powerful word of grace that shows you that in your sins, to be able to operate, you first have to recognize Jesus and Jesus and his love and his mercy and his kindness will ask you, what must I do to be saved? And people of God, as we begin to explore through God's word, I want you to understand that the word that we preach is not religion. It is God's grace. It is what he has provided for mankind that we are to operate in on a daily basis. And so many of you, you're so captivated by your behavior and by what other people's behavior are that your belief system is based on something that is in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. And I'm about to show you through the word of God how Peter's life was transformed by one man who entered his boat, who entered his life, who entered his business. People of God, let me tell you, when Jesus comes into your business, you will want to change your life, your behavior, and you will ask yourself, God, what can I do? What can I change? And that's what repentance is. Repentance is going back and finding God's grace, amen, and we will show you that in the word of God, but repentance is, God, I want to go back to your grace. I want to go back to your favor. I want to go back to your love. I want to go back to your kindness. And when you begin to understand God's grace, it will change your life. You will operate like you've never operated before. You will see your relationships bonded back together. You will see your businesses flourish. You will see, amen, your relationships with your children so much better when you begin to place Jesus in the center of your boat. You see, when you begin to operate, not in your own flesh, but when you begin to operate in the will of God, you will begin to see a new dynamic in your life. You see, so many of us are like Peter. We struggle each and every day. Amen. We toil trying to find our way when all Jesus wants you to do is rest in him and rest in his word. Amen. And I'm about to show you in John, amen, the fifth chapter, starting at the very fourth verse. And we're going to read this. I mean, I'm sorry, Luke 5, 4, 7, excuse me. It says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Verse five, and Simon answering said unto him, master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. 
and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Amen. That's what Peter saw. He saw the abundance of God's grace. He saw the abundance of God's goodness. And when he saw God's goodness, it led him to repentance. Hallelujah. That's the message right there. You see, people of God, in the New Testament, amen, God wants you to see his love. He wants you to see his favor. He wants you to see his blessings. And people of God, this is the message of grace is that when we preach grace, we preach God's love. We preach his kindness. Amen. We preach that he has forgiven you. Amen. That your sins are far removed. Let me tell you, yes, there are consequences to sin. I don't want people to get this notion that I'm giving you the license to sin. Listen, that's not what repentance is. Repentance leads you to grace. So if repentance leads you to grace, how can grace give you the license to sin? It just doesn't make any sense. You see, people of God, I truly believe that if you are a true believer, if you are someone who has truly asked God to come into your heart and to make his abode in your boat, that you don't want to sin. I'm a believer that a true believer doesn't want an excuse to sin. They want an excuse to love God even the more. And when we begin to spread that type of messages to your children, to your coworkers, amen, that's a message that people can grab hold to. Because let me tell you, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants, amen, to be felt. Everybody wants to be heard. And when people can understand that they are loved, they are favored, and that they are blessed through this message of grace, that will ignite them to turn from their sins and come towards the grace of God. Hallelujah. That's right. That's the message that I want you to begin to spread in your family, to spread on your job, to spread throughout your neighborhood, spread in your businesses, that God's grace is here to abound. And he is going to show so much love and favor that one can't help but to give their life over to God. Amen. I'm a living witness that every day, amen, God continues to show his favor and his kindness towards me. And I know many of you have that same testimony. And people of God, we see here in Luke 4, Luke 5, I'm sorry, 4 through 8, that Jesus, he spoke a word. And when we began to forget about our actions and forget about what we want and listen to what Jesus is saying, it will change your life forever. Amen. How many of you have been toiling, trying to get your children to be more obedient, trying to fix your relationship with them? You've been toiling in your relationships. Amen. You've been dead in your career. Your businesses have not been, amen, successful. I'm here to let you know that when you take yourself out of the boat and you put Jesus in the boat, my God, there is an abundance coming your way. You see, Peter didn't want to listen to God or to Jesus, but he did it because of who he was. And because he was obedient and he ignored, amen, what others may have been telling him, hey man, you didn't get anything. Why are you listening to that man? That's how so many of us are today. Amen. We are being told by those in the media, our friends, hey, why are you believing this Jesus stuff? Why do you get on the prayer line? Why do you fast? Amen. Because we want no part of ourselves. That's what God's grace is. It says, I don't want to have to do anything when Jesus has already done it. Why should we toil when he died for us? Amen. Why should we slumber? Amen. When he have provided his grace for us. Why should we have to, amen, go fester when God has given us his son Jesus to do everything for us? The cross, the finished work of Jesus has been provided to you. And because of that, God's grace and his abundance is all over you. You see, people of God... In the Greek, amen, that word repentance means a change of mind. 
It's the change of your belief system. And so many of you today, you need to repent by changing your belief system. What is your belief system? Your belief system is, is God, if I just pray, amen, or if I give, or if I do good, you will show favor. Let me tell you, the right system is, is that you don't have to do anything because Jesus has done it all. Amen. So many times we think that it is us. It is what we do. God is saying, listen, you should be doing it because of your appreciation, not because I want to give you something. I've already given it to you. And so many of us who have been working the law instead of working grace. And when we begin to change our mind and begin to operate in this new grace, you begin to see God do amazing things in your life. Let me show you something. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter, starting at the 14th verse, Romans 6, 14. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Let me tell you, people of God, it was never God's intention after his son went to the cross that you should ever have to think about sin again. That's right. He dominated sin. He placed it under his feet so that we wouldn't have to worry about it. And so many of us on a daily basis, we continue to be condemned in our past and even in our present. But let me tell you something, people of God. God loves you just the way you are. He loves your inadequacies. He loves, amen, all of your fallacies. He loves your failures as much as your successes. God loves you because he has given his son to prove his love to you. Hallelujah. And so many of us, unfortunately, we don't understand the power of God's love, the power of his grace, in spite of who we are, in spite of what we've done, amen, to take that next step forward to receive his abundance. People of God, I'm talking to you today. You have been forgiven. God has washed you. God has cleansed you. Go on with your life unless a greater sin comes upon you. That's what Jesus said. And walk in this new grace, this new covenant that God has gifted us with because sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Amen. When you begin to understand what repentance is, it will change your life. Amen. Listen at this again. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. You see, in the Hebrew, amen, this word means, this word repentance, listen at this, it stands for teshuva, which is a return to grace. Teshuva is the Hebrew word for repentance, which means return to grace. People of God, that's what I'm asking you to do today is to return to God's grace. Amen. Understand that when you operate in his grace, amen, you asking him to come in your boat. And when he comes in your boat, God is asking you to listen and to be obedient, to listen and be obedient. You know, everything that God tells us, sometimes it goes against our flesh. And that's when you know that God is talking to you. Because when God's talking to you, amen, there is something that he is wanting you to do that goes against your flesh. And people of God, when you begin to listen to him, all of your addictions, all of your fallacies, they will begin to wane away because you have begun to put your faith and confidence in him versus yourself. Listen, I know many of you, amen, who have struggles with addictions, whether it's through drugs or alcohol, amen. So many of you, you say, well, I kept asking God for repentance. Let me tell you, I've always ministered this and I mean it now even the more. Don't run from God, run to God. You see, repentance means return to his grace. 
That's why I'm always dumbfounded, amen, when people leave God when they sin. That is not the time to leave God. That's the time to return to God. Amen. And so many of us, we leave because of what people have said about us, or we leave based on things that we think we've done. Let me tell you, there is no man that hasn't done something. That's right. Amen. If they say they haven't, they are lying. We've all had to seek God's grace, his repentance. Amen. We've all had, had to return back to his grace at some point. Amen. If anyone says they haven't, they are a liar. But listen, because of his grace, we don't have to continue to focus on his sin, but we can focus on the abundance that God is about to do in your life. People of God, God is about to change some things around for you. Let's go. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. Hallelujah. It says, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. You see, the enemy wants you to always revert back to the law when sin is mentioned. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that the law is not the answer. It's the truth in God's grace that will bring you the success that you're looking for and it will bring you abundance just like it brought to Peter. My God, let me tell you, because the law states that you've got to do something to earn God's grace. That's not the law of the New Testament. The New Testament or the New Covenant expresses that God's abundance is there and it will lead you to his love. Let me tell you, God loves you more than you can ever imagine. He loves, amen, how you snore, how you smack. He loves that crooked eye that you have. God loves that crooked tooth that you have. He loves who you are and he's working to change you. I often ask people, do you wash yourself before you take a bath? No. You put your dirty self in the bath, expecting the bath to clean you. What sense would it make to clean yourself and then get in the bath? And you see, that's what we try to do. We try to do the work when Jesus is the bath. Hallelujah. Jesus says, come to me just as you are. Come with, to me with your addictions, your issues. Come to me and I will clean you up. It is our duty, amen, not to condemn, not to badger, amen, but show love and preach the gospel of grace and watch your family be led to God, watch your neighbors be led to God, because your condemnation, amen, and you're asking them to change their behavior will only lead them further away from truth. Hallelujah. But when you begin to talk about how God loves you, how he has watched over you, how he has protected you through the pandemic, when you begin to speak of his goodness and all that he has done for you, amen, you can't help but to get excited and folks can't help but to see the joy on your face when you begin to talk about God's goodness. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today about what God is doing. I'm excited about this law of grace. I'm excited about his love that he is about to bestow on you like never before. Listen, write down your testimony. Amen. Jot it down of all of the great things that God is doing. Because when we get back together, I know there's going to be so many of you that has so many testimonies to tell of God's goodness, of his grace, and of his mercy. Amen. Ask Jesus to come into your boat and watch him change your life around. You see, but when he comes, you've got to listen to what he says. You have to be obedient to what he tells you to do. Amen. You may not like it. Amen. But it's better than you toiling all night long. Listen, don't toil anymore. Amen. Don't go hunting for something that God has already provided. Amen. And watch the abundance of fish flow into your boat because you've been listening and been obedient to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, we've got so much more 
in the upcoming weeks, amen, on this subject. Amen, on the subject, amen, and I want you, amen, to stay tuned to what we're going to be ministering, amen, as it relates to God's grace, amen? Amen, listen, we love you, we appreciate you, we wanna pray for you right now. Father, we thank you for this amazing grace. We thank you for your revelation of who your son is and what he is capable of doing. And Father, I pray that those who are found in sin, that they will repent and return to your grace, that they will have a change of mind to say, God, what must I do to be saved? And Father, I pray that this revelation of your love, this revelation of grace will be shared with others so that they may say, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Listen, I'm excited about Amen. The next few messages that we have to minister, because listen, when you begin to understand that condemnation is no more, no matter what people say, no matter how they want you to feel guilty, when you understand and begin to live and preach God's grace, everything around you will change. Amen. I'm telling you, write down the testimony of God's blessings that is about to overcome and take you. Listen, we love you. Amen. We are asking you to continue to be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. Don't stop giving. Amen. Your blessing is in the giving. Amen. We still have needs that we need to take care of. Amen. And I know, amen, that when we get back, we want things to be in order. And so we need your support to make sure that things remain in place. Amen. We've listed ways of how you should give. Amen. Please be a blessing and give to us. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. Amen. And until next time, always remember that God is love. Amen. And Jesus is